Yeah, so um, I am passionate about sheep. I've been passionate about sheep for many years, it's ever since I grew up um, on a sheep farm in Southland with my dad, helping with the lambing beets. So yeah, um, so I'm really happy to be having to talk to you about my favourite topic today. So um, I want to talk about, um, well I'll, I'll just introduce a wee bit about beef and lamb genetics, because we know what beef and lamb is, right? So you levy payers, um, money being put together for this organisation, had some really good um, talks about what they're trying to achieve for you today. And we're just a little organisation, and we're considered separate, we've got our own board to report to, but we are wholly owned by Beef and Lamb New Zealand. So you think about big organisation with structure, but a little organisation within that with a lot of agility. So we can um, decide this is the right direction to go one week, or even on Monday morning. And Monday afternoon we can start putting it into action. And one of those um, next generation progeny tests, we've done a lot of thought into that, but even this year we've added um, Ring to Our Progeny Test Programme, which is pretty much confirming in early March that we wanted to do that, getting mating by the end of March. So quite agile and able to do um, shift and make, um, and make decisions and make impact for the industry on your behalf. So it's your levies, it's also your government money, we get some MB funding for that as well. So we have um, under our umbrella the SIL database where the genetic merit of your rams are evaluated. And we had the progeny test, as Richard mentioned, that are underpinning or benchmarking that, making sure that those values and still are something that's going to be um, realised on a commercial property in, in um, terms. So without those progeny tests, those values won't mean much. So it's really important. And we have research money that goes into the new traits, the future sheep that you might need um, on farm. Thinking about things like greenhouse gas, which is quite topical. Thinking about um, residual feed intake, so how efficient those animals might be with feed. Um, how resilient they might be to, to other diseases and stuff. So we've got research in that avenue as well. And then we have a component on beef genetics, which I'm not going to talk about today, but you're know, happy to talk about after um, another time. I don't know if you can see these slides that well. We won't get too worried about them, but just thinking about um, my topic, I thought genetic tools, or genetics, what's in it for me as a farmer? And thinking about... I want it to be in your hands, so you can make your decisions on farm and make some gain out of these, these tools and these resources that we've put a lot of emphasis in for you. So I wonder if you could just bear with me for a minute, and I want to tell you who's in my audience um, and who I'm talking to today. I see there are a few breeders in here, so that's cool, we have a lot of conversations. But um, have a show of hands of who's farming in a commercial um, farm at the moment. Okay, cool. Oh, good. good. More than 50%, that's cool. So making some decisions around ram buying um, coming up. Uh, is anyone here to thinking about, um, I listened to Jeremy talk before about a lot of uh, farm managers in, um, uh, in this space now. Have there many farm managers in the room? Okay, some aspiring farm managers too perhaps. So that's cool, we we think about what might be in it for you. Um, and then, I mean I have had a sheep booking background and so I am passionate about talking about that. We are trying to bring that into our SIL database um, to be able to look at genetic merit for sheep milking, but I won't spend a lot of time talking about that. I'm happy to field questions, but it is another passion of mine. Okay, so when I think about genetics, what's in it for me, when you're going to go buy those rams, it's about those lambs you're taking home, the lambs that they're going to be producing on your farm. So that's what we really want to think about um, for you. I just wanted to see if we could do a wee whiteboard session to see if you've got questions that you want me to cover, because I've got a big scope here and I don't have to cover all of it. So um, if I whiteboard, would you tell me the key things that you were hoping to get from this session? <coughs> so has anyone got something to start with? Something they were hoping to find out about in this session? Yep, go ahead. Okay, I'll just put it on the whiteboard and see if we get it covered. We'll come back to it if we don't. Anybody else? Happy just to do what I deliver? Surprises? Surprises from the progeny test, perhaps? Yep. Yep. Anything else? Yes. So you've been breeding selection on on your commercial farm after you've got those rams and stuff in. Okay. Breeding selection. Yep. Anybody else? New traits? Cool. I might even ask you some of your opinions of those new traits and what they should be and what the emphasis should be. So that's quite cool. If I've got time. Anything else? A wee burning thing that you're hoping to get? Yes, Richard? Well, one thing I always um, wonder is when you choose a um, how do I compare the old size with, uh, with the next bunch? I 
Okay, old team with new brand, is that right? That's cool, if they better cover that. Anyone else? As you're thinking about farm managers, sometimes you hear a RAM team and you might want to you know, guide the boss to buying some RAM, so that could be an interesting one there too. Any other burning questions? Things I want to make sure I cover? Ramming, so it's like the ram hogger. Yeah, we'll see if we can do a wee bit to that. Yep. Cool. Well, I'll leave it for the if it's something else. Of course you can ask a question and um, we can stop and take some time. And Richard will keep me moving on if I'm staying too long on a topic. It's getting a bit dry. So um, actually the, the previous speakers this morning did a pretty good introduction to our, um, our industry and where we're at. And I was just trying to um, put up a few farm facts slides and I'll just skip through. But just thinking about the size that we are and, and how much of us are um, actually farming sheep and beef, which is quite a, a big proportion here. Just thinking about we're 18 million ewes, breeding ewes. Um, we've been declining and even in the last you know, recent years we're still declining. And so just to think, is doing stuff the same way we've been doing it what we want to keep doing? Have we plateaued? Is our future going to change? Is there some other signals coming? And I think those earlier speakers today have done a good job of, of um, describing some of that. So I'll just skip through those. And that again was about our, our tonnage and thinking about our out, out, um, the external view into the consumer and stuff. So you're pretty well versed in all that from today's talks. So let's bring it back down then onto the farm. And the way we think about genetics, we really want to get this across, is that those rams are an investment in your on-farm profitability. Now I don't want to just talk about productivity. I want to talk about profitability. And you think about the rams you're going to buy this year, you're going to be, in traditional systems, not sheep milking systems, but in traditional systems, you're going to be killing those sons and retaining those daughters for the next three years, maybe four years. In five years' time, the last of those daughters are going to be coming in to your flock and you're going to be killing her sons and retaining um, her daughters. So this ram that you're going to buy, or this ram team you're going to buy, is going to impact your profitability for the next ten years. Hell of a commitment. So we're going to want to have a think about in 10 years' time, what are you going to want? What's, what's coming on you? Not just what's been, but what, where do you want to be? Where do you want to go? So choose wisely. So that's where my role comes in, I see, is that it's not just about, I'm here to help the breeders make the best game that they can, because they've got some vision about where they want to go and where they think the industry should go. But you guys as commercial farmers, I want to empower you to be able to find those um, those traits or those, those types of sheep that you want for the future and have those um, you know, really empowered conversations with your breeder about you know, what you're looking for. Because we all drive the industry. Um, the breeders will tell me that they will respond to what their commercial farmers are asking for. So um, they can think this is a great, we talk them into doing these traits and this um, new um, stuff and adopt, spending more money to make more gain. But if you guys as commercial farmers don't appreciate that, it's hard for them to keep progressing and pushing you ahead. So the questions you ask help drive their business. So don't feel shy about having that conversation. Okay, don't, you, there are those that want to just entrust their breeders, it's not about that, but having that conversation, let them tell you what they're doing and what their vision is. It's a really good um, sharing um, thing to do. So, decision making flow then. So I've just got a few steps that I think I need to underpin or help um, underpin the industry. And the first step, is, of course, is knowing your own breeding objective. We've got a very long New Zealand, very different country that we're all farming on. Even neighbouring properties can have very different management styles, different um, dam genetics, different, um, you know, different philosophies, things, markets they're trying to go for. So I can't solve that for you. I can't tell you that this is the one sheep or the one type that you should go for. You have to do that work and figure that out for yourself. Have a look at your own property and what your objectives are. But I've got a tool that we'll work through just quickly to see if um, we can help you with that in that space. Once you know where you are now, what market you're trying to go for, and where you want to be, that's where we can find those like-minded breeders that are matching that for you. It might be the breeder you already got, which is great, but if you want to have a we explore, we've got some tools in there about um, places you could go. And we'll talk about flock finder, genetic trends, silent lists along the way. Finding that breeder is probably the biggest decision that you can make. Um, after that, it's into the little bit of the details about finding the particular ram within that, uh, within that flock that's available to you. Having a look at the structure and type, but that may be covered by your breeder. Um, there'll be index and breeding values you might want to think about. 
particular rams that you're looking for and price will be part of your component. But really, those first two steps are the biggest bits that you can do um, to start getting your genetic uh, plan on the way. So how many of you farmers, the ones that put their hands up to say they're farming um, and making decisions about ram buying, how many of you already have an existing plan, genetic plan? A wee few, good. So you might be already using some tools that are out there to help you do that, or you have your own systems, that's fine. Um, but we've also thought we could help a little bit in this space, and this will be tiny writing, um, so I'm not expecting you to read it entirely. But I've also developed this little better sheep breeding booklet, which has this, um, these questions that we're posing here to help you start thinking about where are you now and where do you want to be to highlight which of those traits are going to matter the most to you. So it's, um, there's questions under reproduction, under lamb survival, under growth, um, what you care about adult size, uh, and what this is on a maternal side. And then there are questions, if you're looking for terminal rams, specific questions related to them. And so where the questions are, there's the traits of the index grouping out there that's, um, that's underpinning that. So if you're um, saying what you're doing now is pretty much what you're going to do in the future, and that trait's a maintaining trait. If you're seeing that you want to get a lot of advance in um, some of those other traits, then you want to probably talk to your breeder about that, saying, I want to be finding rams that are going to do this for me. So I think it's just a, an easy little template. shouldn't take too long to fill out before you're going to buy rams and having that, and pairing that conversation with your breeder, um, looking for those traits. And they're probably asking you those questions as well. There's nothing too new, but we have got some benchmarks in there um, that we've got obtained from some consultants and talking about you know, what's the benchmark for easier or harder country? So you can sort of think, if you don't know the answer yourself, or that, that little, um, you know, call it key performance indicator yourself, then uh, maybe you've got a wee guide to sort of start and make a bit of a guess and, and sort of see if it's something you want to do. Okay, so what I'd like to do, can we work through this as a bit of a group? Okay, I know I've got quite a big group, but I think people will voice up. If, um, you might not be able to read the questions that well, but I can read them out from here. Um, and if I just do on a whiteboard, you know, where you are now and where you want to be, and we'll see if we can do a bit of a, a, a key breeding objective to start us off. Okay, so perhaps I can flip this board, can I? I can turn it around probably. Right, so if I'm having a look at the first um, question for the terminal rams, um, what percentage of the lambs survive to weaning? So if I'm thinking about my scanning percentage, including triplets, um, over the weaning percentage, what, um, what percentage of lambs are surviving? The benchmarks here are 90% for easier country and 80% for, for um, harder country. What would um, some people want to volunteer what they might be experiencing now? What's survival like for you on your farm? Farmers? 80%? Eighty-five? Seventy-five, sorry, so eighty, seventy-five? Eighty-two. Eighty-two? Okay, so how about we do an average of saying it's eighty? Is that right? Or is that a bit, no, maybe seventy-eight? Okay. So now, what do you want it to be? Hundred? Hundred's pretty aspirational, eh? Cool. Ninety? Think it's pretty fair? Thinking about the next five years, ninety percent might be a goal? Happy with that? Cool. Okay, growth. What percent of your land are you finishing to slaughter on your property? Just thinking, so, yeah. Are you doing all of them? Or only a portion of them doing some sale land? So benchmarks here was 100 on the easier country and 70% on the harder country? 100%? 100? How many? 5%? <laughs> Mostly store. This is going to be a great average. Yep. Anybody else? 20% is, is your, so you're, um, you're selling 80%, so store lambs. Cool. Yeah, anybody else? 60. So some pretty low averages there, so how about we bring that down to about, say, about 50% about is where we're at now for finishing. Where do we want to be? The same people that voiced up, do you want the same? Or more? Same? More? You want, so you go, want to go from 20% to 60%? Yep. Anybody else? 60% yeah, 60%. 60%, so how about we put a goal in here saying, uh, I think 60% that someone had a wee bit high, like just thinking about an average base and uh, of going up top. You in particular might be going up to more like 90, 100%, don't know. 
Um, okay, what is the average carcass weight at the moment? Have a think about your kill sheet. We've got your, um, 19 kgs is on easier country, 17 kgs on harder. 16? Yep, 16, pretty normal. What's that? 19.6, cool. Anybody else? So if we do an average of 18, thank you. Do an average of 18 kgs, where do you want it to be? Are you at optimum? What do you want it to be? You want it to be up to 19? You got it at 19 already? Anybody else? 19 to 20, but quicker. 19, but quicker? Well, okay. True. Um, well, I've got a question here about average dressing percentage. Um, look, your carcass weight over your kill weight. Have you got a, a value on that? It's about, on average, the uh, benchmark's around 43%. What are you guys getting? Anybody else? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Dressing up. I'll just put 43% in here then, just in just the time. What do we want it to be? Are we looking for a gain in that? Have we got that one of our targets? Yep, what do you want it to be? 46. 46? For a season. For a season? So maybe a bit of a list there. Okay. Um, what's your average wean weight now? Thinking about 90 days. So if you do 100 days weaning, maybe you want to add an extra kg per week um, the, to compare the bet, uh, benchmark. We've got 30 kgs in easier country and about 25 kgs in harder country. What would you be, weaning weight wise? 27? 20, 29? Anyone else? 27? Okay, so how about I'd put, um, oh, we'll put 27 there. That's more of a, a median than a mean. Where do you want it to be? 32? 31? Okay, cool. So we, well, let's put up to 31 here then, because we want it to lift. Um, and what percent of your lambs achieve that kill weight um, off mum? How much, how many, uh, what percentage are you getting away um, to the works off mum? Oh, the, the benchmarks are easier countries getting about 25% and harder countries getting 10%, but I've heard as much as none, up to 50 or 60, so what's in the room? 50? 20? Over there? 12? So, okay, so some are doing quite well. Maybe we put the average around about 40, is that okay? Where do you want it to be? Is, that, do you, is 50 where you want it to be? Would you like to go higher? What to? 70? 50? Yep. Bevan, over there? Would you? Is it a target? Or is it not a, about that scout, right? It's okay if you've got a long time to finish it, it's not a problem, it's not, not a priority for you. Okay, so maybe just a modest lift here and then up to about, let's say, 50%. Someone's already achieving that, so they'd have their own individual lift, but just thinking about our group. Um, and then about your meat, what uh, percent are actually achieving a, um, a yield premium at the works? You're getting a yield, you are getting a yield premium? Just it's a, a yes or no question first. Yeah, what, no, what percent, no, you're 93% are getting a yield premium. Okay, anybody else getting yield premiums for their lambs? Yep, no? No? A few shapes? Because I had to think about that. If you're getting a yield, pre or, um, so maybe maybe the average is nil. Someone is getting some. Well, we don't really get them like so. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about the future? Do you think that they will in the future? Do you think it's going to be something in five years' time? Do you need to be breeding for it now to capture that? Just as a question, I'm not telling. Yes. Yeah. So maybe you want to have this think about it, and maybe it is, um, maybe it is getting into some in there. Maybe we'll put it up to 15% or something like that. I'm not telling you this is something you can go home and do for your own business. But so that's as simple as it is. Now we know we've got a, a bit of a modest lift, in, or quite a, quite a big leap in survival that we want. Um, we've done quite a bit in growth that we want to do. Um, so if I think about drawing a line, if this was at the middle, was it acceptable? Sorry, you guys can't really see, can you? But um, if that was the middle, I probably want to go quite high on survival, I draw that line. On growth, I'm probably going to be a bit above, you know, the average. I'm putting a bit of a push in there. And with meat, maybe it's less so, but it's still a component in there. So just think about, even just these lines will say this is my emphasis um, for my breeding objective. That can be informative information to share with your breeder, to say, hey, I'm looking at survival, it's definitely something in my... Um, 
radar, I need growthy animals, and you know, meet the consideration, but it's less than the other thing. So that's all we need to do for our breeding objective. But come back to it and see if you're achieving it. Now, just thinking about um, the farm uh, managers in the room, I've had a farm manager say to me, look, they had some KPIs they had to meet about dressing percentage and getting percentages off mum and, and all that sort of thing. They're saying, look, I'm doing my hardest, but I don't know if the genetics is going to get me there. Like, I think the genetics is the bottleneck. So um, we'll have a look through. You can check your genetics of your RAM team and see if they look like the animals that are fitting your objective. Um, and if they're not, that helps some power conversation you could have um, with your, the RAM or the farm owner to say, hey, look, we need to have a look at these objectives. We want to change this. We've got to change our management or we've got to change our genetics. Cool. So we've just done our breeding objective. We can now go and have a look at some finding some like-minded breeders. How big is the time, Richard? I'm about third three. Righto, okay. I, I'll chop some stuff out. We'll just get to the juices. And in fact, I'll turn my whiteboard around so I focus on just that. Has anyone in the room got the Flock Finder app on their phone? One, two? Oh, cool. I've talked to you before. Anybody here? Young people? Flock Finder app? So if you've got an iPhone, go to your app store. It's free to download. And you can um, pull up the Flock Finder app. If nothing else, it's a directory of future employers, perhaps. No. But as uh, we've been criticised, it's a directory of stud breeders um, in New Zealand. It's nothing more than a directory. But yeah, it is. It's a really handy directory to have in your back pocket at any time. It's free to download. If you've got an I um, iPhone, it's the App Store. If you haven't got an iPhone, you just go through the web um, and uh, through the Safari or uh, what it, Firefox or whatever you've got on your phone and type in Flock Finder app. And you can download that onto your phone. And what happens is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well. Um, maybe I was going to try and put it on screen, but I can't. Um, but essentially, I've got, I can type in breeders' names. I can type in regions. I can type in sheep type that I'm looking for. I can type in the traits that I wanted. So we just did, we said that survival, growth, and meat were pretty important. I could type these into here. Just I want to find breeders that are measuring that. Um, and it'll give me a list of breeders I can look for. I can uh, find out where they are in New Zealand, so um, it'll pull up on a map where they're located. Uh, and if I forget all the terms around breeding values and indexes and stuff, I've also got a, um, a glossary in here, put, um, looking at I, um, pushing the I button, I can find out a bit more information about what does that breeding value mean, what does that index mean. So it's a pretty handy directory to have in your back pocket that'll work offline uh, and it'll just refresh when you're in, um, in region. So, uh, a couple of hands went up, but I'd love to see more hands go up next time I um, talk to you guys. Um, and that's the app there. Okay. Um, a RAM's value. Now, before we talk about genetic trends and leader lists and stuff, <coughs> let's have a think about RAM value. How do we tell the value of a RAM? So I've got a couple of RAMs in front of me here. Which one of these is going to be the ones producing progeny and more fertile? Which one's going to be more growthy lands? Which ones are going to produce progeny that are more resistant to health, or, uh, your health challenges? I don't really know necessarily from just looking um, in the pen in front of me. I need some more information. And remember, what I'm really buying are those lambs that he's going to produce for me on farm. Okay, not just the way he looks. He's got to be able to serve my ewes, of course, but um, and, and for a few years, and the and the ewes he's going to produce that I'm going to keep. I want them to, you know, stay in my flock too. But it's the lamb crop that he's going to make me that I'm, I'm really buying. But when I'm buying rams, I'm buying hoggins, or I'm buying tutus. They haven't had any lambs yet. They haven't got any lambs measured that I can really um, tell what they're going to be doing, how well they're going to perform. So I've got to rely on estimated value. Okay, I've got to put an estimate and, sort of, uh, and think about it. So this is simply put, it's based on the, la the ram's family line. So um, all his um, you know, cousins, his mum and dad, his grandparents, his cousins, aunties, uncles, so that all feeds into his estimated value. It's also got his own performance in there, so anything he's been measured for is into his estimated value. And if he had lambs, it would be in there, but mostly we're buying rams without them. So that's the basis of an estimated breeding value, rather than worrying about all the math behind it. Well, that's cool. We've got, I don't know, 50 different breeding values, quite a lot. There's things on you know, wean weight and survival and um, worm feck and facial eczema and big body condition score, a whole raft of breeding values which you can find in that Flock Finder app. But which ones are going to make me more money? Which ones are going to be more profitable? Where should I start? 
So to help this, because we also realise it's commercial farmers, you've got a lot on your business to worry about. So we need to have some core indexes that you can start with um, just to, to get you, um, you know, some sort of grounding to sort of compare one flock to another. So we've got, with the breeders, we've come up with an agreed um, standard index. Now they can still have their own customised index, but if the standard index is available, you can at least have a starting point, something familiar to, to have a look at to, to guide you. The first one was the maternal index. It's going to have um, growth. It's about 50% put to growth. There's 28% emphasis on the reproduction. 13 on um, on the the what was that one? survival? Yep. And 7% on wool because we still recognise we're getting some income from wool, but it's a maternal animal. And we know when we go hard on growth, we're going to get some bigger size uh, adults unless we put some break on there. I mean, maybe there will be some rule benders, but as a rule of thumb, that's how it goes. So we know we need to keep adult size in our index just to make sure we control that one while we're going for um, increased growth. Terminal worth, a little bit simpler. We're just going to be looking at 71% is on the growth aspect, 21% on the, the meaty bit, the meat yield, so about how fleshy the animal is going to be, and 7% on the survival is in that core index. So sort of similar to what we probably have more emphasis that we want on survival than what's in the core. But that means when you go from one farm to another, you can find these indexes. And they're in cents per use lamb, uh, yeah, cents per use mated for the maternal. So you mate it to 100 ewes, you'll get that, you know, cents be converted to dollars. So, um, and it's comparing one ram in dollars to another ram that you've got available to you. So it's a comparison. So a higher index, or as, as supposedly more money, more profit you're going to make from that ram, over one with a lower index available to you. Uh, of course, you've got to be aware, um, readers will take you through the, the extremes and stuff, but that's the, the general rule of thumb. Terminal worth, um, less traits in there, so the index might be a bit lower. Of course, it's not the full story. Um, we did a simple one with terminal worth, but if we're looking for maternal sheep, we might be wanting to add in things about also wanting some meaty animals, having animals that are resistant to worms, or having animals that are resistant to facial eczema. Um, so breeders can have them turn that core trait plus that index added, so you'll know it's transparent when you see that value, that you know it's got a little something extra in there. Um, and they can also customise indexes to put in front of you that you're looking for, but at least you could have one core to, to benchmark. Most of you will see this slide at this, hopefully, at some stage. But just thinking about up here um, on that vertical axis, it's about profit, how much profit we can make. So we've just talked about indexes being profit. We want to see the breeders making that gain year on year, accelerating year on year, more money each year, um, for you to be making gain uh, more money each year too. So the stud breeders a speedboat, if you like, going in, um, going great guns in a trait that you care about, like growth, survival, meat. And you'll be the skier behind him, a couple of years lag behind. But you're going at exactly the same rate as him if you keep, um, or her, you keep returning to that breeder, okay? So your rate of gain will be parallel, but you want to choose those breeders that are making gain in those traits that you've identified for your own objective, okay? So objective, find the matching breeder, check that they're making that gain, which they can provide for you, um, and before choosing those rams. Ten minutes? Sweet. Cool. This is what a genetic trend looks like. This is the Zealand maternal worth, um, and I think the... Average at the moment is around 1,500 cents per you made it. So um, that's the average. There'll be ones above and below that. Uh, but that sort of gives you a guide. And for the terminal worth, it, if I enlarge that again, it's around 900 cents per lamb born. So the terminal is about the number of lambs you're going to um, the value per lamb born. And uh, it's all tracking high compared back to 1995. Okay? It doesn't really matter about that, but that way you know that they were just checking we're making gain year on year. So you want to get those that are going steeper than that uh, are going to be making faster gain than average. So um, have a look for those breeders. Okay, 10 minutes you reckon. I wonder if I can do this tool live. I think we'll have a crack. So um, this is a ram finder tool. Now it's a bit clunky. Okay, but so be with. We're just going to try and um, whip through it a little. But I want to, um, we've done some modifications to try and make it a bit easier to use. So I'll just um, pull it up on the web here. So I've gone through my sole database. Oh, let's go, which one I already pulled up earlier, but okay. Ram finder tool. It's a real window into sill, okay? It's a window into the values that are there that the breeders will be putting up or, or measuring their animals on. 
And if I pull up a terminal birth one here, I won't spend too much time because I realise it's hard to see on that screen there. Um, if I pull up terminal birth, I can, what did we say that the number was average? 900. 900. So I can type in here a minimum terminal worth of 900, and I can be looking for breeders that are doing more than that. Might want to look for, what are we going to buy, hoggets or, uh, or tutus? Tutus. So, two th well, think about for next year, right? So it'll be 2018. Well, how about we do 2016 borns, just pretend it was this year. And I'll leave it after ram bone season, actually mating. So they were born in 2016. They don't have any progeny. They're male. Um, they're a terminal sire. And I don't have any special flocks that I want to include or exclude. Just do search. It'll come up with a list of rams here. Okay? And it's ordered by the New Zealand terminal worth. And the next columns along are survival, growth, and meat. Just those traits that we identified before. There's a bit of family information and some breed information. Everything that's underlined, I can find more information about. So I can find out about the flock, just like on Flock Finder. I can find some address, where it's at. I can also find out about the ram himself. And it even presents it in an EBB graph. So this is about the estimated value and it's um, in the percentile ranking. So one's over here to the, this left over here, are the less favourable. Um, you know, rams and the ones to the, go to the right are the very favourable ones. So, so maternal worth or terminal worth here, I picked the ram at the top of the list. It's got a lot of bars to the right. So even if you're not that familiar with the numbers, an EBB graph is a quick graphical way to have a look at the quality of the ram. There's more information here, so you can have a wee fill your boots um, moment with that about finding out about rams that might be on offer um, or and having a look at um, which flocks are featuring the most in that um, in that list. So having a look down here, here's the flock IDs, and you can type them into your Flock Finder app and find out who they are if you wanted to, um, if you're getting a bit tired of opening up the, the little things there. Okay, if you knew that you were going um, to, you wanted to find a specific, specific ram, and this is where I'm thinking about your own ram team. If you knew the flock that you'd bought them from, and if you knew um, the um, ID, or you've got the tag number in front of you, you can check your ram team. At the moment, you can only check it one by one. I think I had a look at a RAM um, just before it was typed up. Just to be with, so go back there. Yeah, so I found a RAM that was at the top of a leader list. Um, it's public on still, so I'm not, it's already available, so I'm not uh, revealing anything too private. Um, I type in this flock number, I type in this tag number, and I push search. Oh, I'll just double check that I don't need that. Uh, Double check if I've got any of those filters on. I'll take this filter off. And I better make, I know that this RAM is going to be a, a dual purpose RAM just because I took it from a dual purpose list. I can search for him now and let's hope he turns up. So here he is. I've got the individual RAM himself. I can see how his New Zealand maternal worth this time is. Um, what was that average again? Do you remember? Maternal worth. Maternal? Fifteen hundred, yeah. So this one maternal worth is at um, nine hundred, so a little bit below average. But where is he good? I picked it from a leader list um, on Wormfeek. So let's—I'll just add that one in. I'll just pop back here, um, and we'll tick. I've got Wormfeek on the list here. I know it's fast for you to see, but if you want to have a wee play at home, you can um, have a bit more time. I've got DPF here, which is the Wormfeek um, one, and that's around nine hundred points he's getting from his Wormfeek. And if I had a look at. Um, at, at where the average was, in fact, this will give me a guide if I go back to the original screen, 50% will be at the 68 um, index points for, um, for Wormfeck. So he's monstering it on Wormfeck. And I might be giving away a little bit on some growth or some um, survival or, or something in there, but I can choose whether or not this is something I still want to add to my program and put with my user or compensate for that. So you can have a look at a window into your RAM team, see what they're good at, and decide which group of users you want to put them to. So, Quite a handy wee tool. How much more, Richard? Sweet. Let's do terminal size. How many of you are doing um, terminal size, um, using terminal size in your program? A couple of hands, a couple of hands. How many, um, what percentage of users would you put to the terminal size? How, did you say? 50? 100. It's not going to retain anything. Anybody else? 45? About 30? Cool. Okay, so that's good. Um, and uh, maybe some other of you aren't putting any to the terminal site. I just thought um, 
let's have a look at the value you're going to get out of that. So this is another wee tool that we're just developing. We've got it in prototype form at the moment. It's just to help you think about um, the value of one RAM over another. And it's called the RAM Value Calculator. So I know you probably can't see it too well, but I can talk you through. We've got to ask, answer some questions, and then it's going to tell us um, if we've got RAM A over RAM B, well, how much more value that RAM's going to be. So how long are you using your RAMs for? How many years? What? Three? Yeah, three years? Two years? Oh, okay, yeah. All right, so we better bring this number down to two and a half, average of the room. Okay. What's your tailing percentage? Uh, docking percentage, I'm up north. What are you getting at the docking gate? Thinking about lambs docked over ewes mated? 140? <coughs> Anybody else? 125? 150? Cool, okay. Well, I've got 120 in there. How about we lift that to average of 130? Um, we just put in some basic numbers to start with. Yep. Okay. How many, um, how many ewes am I making those rams to? Is it 1 to 100, 1 to 80, 1 to... What would be normal? 1 to 80? 1 to 20? 100. Okay, I'll make the average at 100 then as I've got it there. So some are doing less or more. Yeah. You can sort of see what the value might be for that. How many <laughs> lemons are you getting out of your use? How many years? Five, Five lemons. Cool. Anybody else? Two if you're lucky. So on average, do you reckon more like three? Three and a half? Yeah. Anybody else? <coughs> All right, so we'll drop that down perhaps to three. Might be the average of the room. A lot of turnover. Means you're going to be having a lot more replacements then. So what's your percentage of replacements? 100% for you because you're doing all those to terminal so I understand that. What about over there? Pardon? You're doing 70% replacements. So doing a big, trying to go up and gain quite a lot. Okay, cool. Anybody else? 21. So about a fifth, yep. Real wide range here. How about I just leave this at a little bit at the 25%, which was just one of the, the first uh, ones there. And then terminal size. Let's start with putting none to the terminal size, just to see how that um, pans out, the value. Um, survival, I'm just going to put in the industry average here of 84%. Um, that's just talking about that percentage that are, are weaned over the um, percent that were there at scanning, including those triplets. Oh, we've got, a, we've got a funny little thing. Oh no, the little button that I want to push is just down here. How can I do that? I know, if I do that. Oh, prototype's failing. Okay, well, I can tell you what the result would be. Oh, sorry about that, it was going to be having fun live, but um, the... What I can type in is what a, a, an average maternal ran, say the average was, um, was 1,500, right? If we're going to go to the top 20%, um, they'll say that might be around the 2,000 mark. I can type in RAM A um, at 2,000 versus RAM B at 1,600. And with those numbers that I just plugged in, I can find out you know, what extra value I'm going to get from that RAM. Um, and those, I know I've done those numbers a few times in a few presentations, so it's around this 12, um, 1,200 to 1,500 Mark, it would be interesting to see with your numbers. Um, and what do you think would happen to that now if I put 45% of the, the use to the, to the terminal sire? What would I do to the value I'm getting out of my maternal sire? Do you think it would go up? Or do you think it would go down? Would it go up? Anybody else? Would it go up? Why? So you're assuming that you're doing a RAM, uh, a, a top quality U, so you turn off, yeah. So do, yeah. I'm a bit still thinking about that as well. So even without those things accounted for, you're going to get more value out of that um, maternal sire, simply because you're now retaining more, a greater proportion of that maternal sire's progeny, because you've not um, diluted it with so many that you're going to kill, send off to the works automatically. So not only will the terminal sires give you more money on your bottom line, they can actually give you more money out of your maternal program as well. And again, you can do the selections of the ewes that go to the, the ones you're going to get replacements from. And a 
as well as making the money out of that terminal style as well. So with this um, case study, they were just looking at putting 10% of the use to the terminal style, the high, high merit rams, and they're getting around $6,000 profit on a pretty typical farm. And if they put 40%, that was ramping up to about $27,000. And this was just from that terminal style alone without thinking about the extra value you're getting in the maternal um, ram as well. So some tools at your fingertips that you can use. Uh, so have a wee search and get curious and um, yeah, it's in your hands. Oh, yay, wine. Yeah, wine. <laughs> the health check, they said it's bad for me. <laughs> oh, go on. It's All good right, for yeah. the French, isn't it? So, so we'll roll with that one. But, yeah, um, yeah thank you very much, Annie. Uh, we've got a lot of homework to do at the end of today, but I think um, going online and testing out those, those searches is, um, is a really, really good thing to take home and... Um, and, and yeah, try and... The genetic plan, if they take nothing else home, do the genetic plan. Do the genetic plan. It would be really cool. Think about where you're getting your rams and whether they've got a, a plan that aligns with yours and, 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 and look for the best genetics. But, um, yeah, lots to think about there, Annie, and, yeah, if we can all show our, our appreciation. Sorry, there's not a lot of um, activity going on around us, so if anyone's got a, a last burning question, Ben. Well, cool, we've got somebody in the room doing that. Yeah. So if you're putting the whole lot to the terminal ram, what are you doing about replacements? You're changing to a terminal breed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is, is that what you're doing with your 100%? So you're sourcing maternal animals into your program. Yeah. So the only thing about if you have a terminal, if you decide to put make all your animals terminal, just thinking, um, you are giving away some uh, money that you can make on you know, that wool money. Well, maybe you don't mind that. Maybe it's lack of sharing. Yep. Yep, so that's, um, you have a wee look at that, so it has to be that number crunching for you. But um, is that terminal sire able to be as fertile? So will you get as many lambs? Not usually because they're not selected for it. Um, is that terminal sire as good? I mean, he'll be really good on growth and meat and survival, which is the main things that they're selected on. But are there other traits like resistance of, to worm challenge, resistance to facial eczema, um, ability to keep condition and, and, um, and tight feed? Are those things, that, are they going to be good enough at that? Because those maternal animals have got room to be selected for that. So um, that's about if you do decide just go terminal only, what you want to give away. Um, I didn't do actually a trait today. Yes, yes. Yeah, probably the cults, right? So, so we think think about. Yep. That, that top question, accuracy of traits. Yep. In particular, when you're looking at a terminal animal, the growth against the meat. The right emphasis, you mean? What I mean is that you could kill them for maybe in the 70th day in singles. Come January, you'll be killing twins. But there'll be still today on the farm, from the same ewes and rams, twins, some of those twins. So, accuracy of the traits and how So, the room for meat yield. So, so, meat yield is, um, it, it's about how fleshy that animal is. And so, the room, the, the amount of. Um, the amount of variation there in meat yield, about how much muscle is on that bone, uh, is less variation than how, um, how growthy those, how many kgs you can put on the frame. So um, the growth, you'll probably make a lot, uh, there's more room to make selection pressure on there than there is on the meat. Um, but you, to be able to be faster growing animals, you expect they're going to get to finishing faster. And that's the rule of thumb that's applied to the growth module. But um, if you're not finding that, if you're finding that they're not getting good, um, you're getting quite framey or um, you know, lackluster animals that might be having a look at their growth. I mean, what is it? usually your animals will go that, is it shelly? Is that the sort of term? Or slabby? When um, they haven't got, um, their rate of growth is slowing down or having some, you know, um, they're not making gain even if the um, feed's not there. So it's about the acceleration on the growth, you're normally 
can we get more of those away to kill sooner? And that's the, that's the rule of thumb, and that's the tools we've got at the moment. But happy to hear feedback and, and talk more about that. I didn't do surprise with Prodigy Chiefs or um, nothing. Sorry about that. You'll have to talk to me at um, break time. Oh, another question? Um, I was just wondering how much of the information that goes into the, like, about your RAMs is coming from, like, background history and records and everything, and how much is coming from genome analysis? Good question. So that question was about how much is just about the performance recording on farm versus how much about the genomic or the DNA profile that's going into there. So we're just um, investing in a program now, it's about to be, um, it's coming into line where um, genomic information used to be run a separate evaluation and performance information was in another and then they blended it afterwards. Now we're going to blend it all at once. So those that are doing genomic information, which is still only a proportion of the, the breeders, um, those that are doing that will see their same estimated value alongside those doing performance recording. So it'll look like one number, but it's going to be influenced, so more accurate, so there's more layers of information, you get better accuracy of that prediction. Um, and so the genomics is another layer of information that can add in to help uh, make that estimation better. Um, that's pretty much the way you'll see it. You can tell fine. Uh, at least 50% uh, yes. of all lambs killed in New Zealand are maternal. Yes. And then probably 60 to 70%, 100% maternal, and it's not in the maternal worth index, it's 21% in the maternal index, why not? And will eating quality supersede it? Really good question, I'm so pleased you asked that. So I would love meat to be in the, in the maternal worth index. The reason why it's not is I haven't got enough um, breeders yet measuring it, and it's difficult to measure because we've only got our ultrasound scanning is the only thing that we can do in a live animal. And on an individual basis, it's pretty low accuracy phenotypes, so you have to measure 12 progeny of a ram to tell how he's going to be with his meat yield. Um, and the other way I can do it is kill those lambs and measure them at the, at the meat works, but I can only get one work that still understands that data, and I have to make sure that I'm killing typical lambs rather than just the ones that are the cows. So it's been hard for breeders to measure. We're working on um, making, opening it up to new meat works um, and having better, uh, more of that eye muscle area scanning data going in and the meat module getting... Um, if we get more measuring it, more connectedness, we'll be putting it into maternal worth. The other question was? Eating quality. Yes, so eating quality. So how, like, <laughs> talking a whole lot about that, Juicy. We may have to give yep. this for cool. up, sorry. Cool. Annie. Um, but, but Derek, I'm sure you've got Annie's ear anyway. So, but yeah, hate to kill good conversation, but if you need Thank to make you your way to other rooms, um, yeah, I better get cracking. No, very good. Thank you. Um,